Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your day. Wow, we got some good stuff to talk about. I say that every episode, but every episode I'm excited to bring you the news around the internets. But before I do, check out our awesome disc plates. Oh yeah, they're just hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Look at how gorgeous they are. Anyways, if you want to pick up your own metal prints, you can do that at displate.com forward slash UFD tech official, enter UFD as a coupon code and save 15%. Do that. Anyways, let's jump on into the bippity boppity news, which is, oh my gosh, Nvidia did it again. Their drivers are so bored. They're so broken. My goodness, friends, update immediately. Not like last time where just two weeks ago, they were having performance issues because one of the parts of the driver was actually utilizing way more CPU than was necessary. This time it's actually some severe security concerns in the kernel that uh, that can expose you to a lot of bad things. So apparently because there's an issue with that with the driver not properly synchronizing shared data, uh, a hacker or a malware program could obtain control of your system, could attack with a denial of service or gather the data off your computer relatively easily. So go update to the latest NVIDIA drivers right this moment because not only if you're not experiencing like gaming issues, you actually have some security flaws in your system. We'll leave a link in the video description for the driver for you to update to because uh, right now it's currently bad news bears with how you have things set up. So get, get new NVIDIA drivers, please. NVIDIA themselves marked it as a high severity vulnerability. So you should really just like make sure that you get this sorted ASAP. But you know what? NVIDIA needs to get sorted their patents because apparently uh, they are infringing on patents by a company known as Xperi. Xperi. Anyways, kind of like expiry date or something like that. Xperi, Xperi might be well known for winning lawsuits against companies like Samsung and LG, uh, especially with the fact that they apparently buy up patents and then as this Tech Power Up article put it, there's some strike throughs on things. So Nvidia has been patent trolled, I mean sued over patent infringement by Xperi and then saying Xperi is not your average back alley IP hoarder uh, strike through but actually technology innovator. It does look like a company like Xperia with only a $1.2 billion market cap might be taking on a juggernaut here with NVIDIA just by purchasing some patents that they want to go against NVIDIA with. But uh, I mean, NVIDIA isn't just one to lay down. They're probably gonna fight this, but Xperia is saying that, <clears throat> we believe that NVIDIA is using our patent semiconductor technology in certain of its CPUs and processors. And we have been speaking with NVIDIA for several years about taking a patent license. We ultimately could not reach an agreement and we felt that we needed to take this action to defend our intellectual property rights and we filed in Delaware, blah, 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 blah. So uh, yeah, NVIDIA having to deal with some patent stuff, they're probably just gonna pay it out if I had to guess. And it's be like, it's going to court because they want the cash and NVIDIA was like, no, and they're like, fine, fine. That's just how I imagine things going down behind the scenes. But you know what's not going down behind the scenes? Parachutes, because they're out in the open with floating down stuff. Anyways, Boeing Space has finally tested the Starliner parachute test and apparently everything went as it was supposed to. This is one of the steps for the third company that's gonna be ent entering into the private space race. We obviously have SpaceX, I was gonna say Tesla. We have SpaceX, we have Blue Origins, and we have Boeing all looking to get into the space race. So the Starliner parachute spacecraft thing is supposed to help astronauts who are on the ISS get home safely. And the fact that it's working well might give a better mode of transportation for them to hit the ground softly and gently. You don't want them going, okay? Cause it's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop. This parachute part was very important for them to get right and they spent all this time working on it. I mean. It's not landing a rocket several times, like shooting it up and bringing it back down. But I mean, it's a good job, Boeing. I'm sure it takes a lot of engineering. I'm just memeing at this point. Let's move on. And then let's talk about something that's super extra that really nobody, nobody needs, nobody wants. I'm sure some people want this, but I can't even anymore. I can't even because we have a Louis Vuitton handbag that has flexible displays built into the outside. It's not even a device, it's a, it's a handbag. Apparently the, the screens are 1920 by 1440 AMOLEDs and they were shown off during a runway show in New York City. Apparently they were running an internet browser. I don't, I can't even like, there's no word on price. There's no word on why. Why, why, what future are we living in friends? And then we've got some good news for companies that look to go 
find shareholders to invest in them and take all of their cash to invest in becoming a real big boy company. Well, one of the issues that has existed with people like companies like Uber and Lyft and other ones listing on, let's say the New York Stock Exchange is that there's a lot of pressure with that. It, like it's a big boy stock exchange. You have to have all of your ducks in a row. Going public is no easy feat, but now it appears that the SEC has just approved a stock exchange for tech startups so that hopefully it can reduce the pressure, make it more Silicon Valley friendly, and just make it so that they can actually get their public investment without all of the need for public scrutiny, because who wants that, I'll tell you. The exchange is gonna be called the Long Term Stock Exchange, uh, and it's apparently gonna have rules to limit executive bonuses and require disclosures for milestones, and it's gonna reward long-term shareholders with more voting power, which would help people to get in early on tech startups and allow them to grow more rapidly. At least that's the general idea. So that is kind of cool, but it could also lead to gigantic bubble of people just investing in companies that have gone on a stock exchange, but have no real backing behind it because nobody's putting pure profit or like actual gross gross profit, net profit as a priority in their tech businesses anymore. It's just, I raised millions of dollars, even though I don't have a viable business model, give me more cash so I can say I raised even more millions. I'm not salty, you're salty. But let's talk about another bubble, blockchain, Bitcoin, yay. HTC released the Exodus, which was uh, you know a blockchain phone, one of the world's first blockchain phones. But apparently they said that uh, it's just a little bit too expensive. So they're gonna be launching the Exodus 1S, which is supposed to be a cheaper version of the Exodus flagship, somewhere between $250 and $300. It's supposed to be a full node on the Bitcoin blockchain and allow you to have a blockchain smartphone. And in case any of your parents doubt how cool you are as a tech person, you just show them your Bitcoin phone and they'll be like, oh my gosh, show me how to invest. And then we can get into the next bubble. That's how we do it. Speaking of another bubble, Apple's ego, Tim Apple's ego. Let's talk about TSMC, because apparently they have started producing the A13 chip, which is supposed to go into the next generation of iPhones and possibly the next generation of iPads, although that would likely be the A13X. Anyways, the A12 chip, the A12 Bionic, was actually quite a nifty little smartphone processor. It was one of the very first on seven nanometers. It had things that were equivalent to tensor cores for AI processing for the cameras. It did a lot of good, and it looks like the A13 is likely to be in somewhere of the same generic uh, improvement where it's going to be using the seven nanometer EUV lithography. So A12 is on seven nanometers, this is on EUV. We're expecting a 17% increase in transistor count and a 10% reduction in power, which could mean that you get better battery life or if they just cram more into it, then you get better performance. It's Apple, so they'll go somewhere in the middle and then tell you to pay more for it, which makes a whole lot of sense. And then speaking of new technology that's kind of cool and gonna be going into phones, maybe, possibly, I don't know. I don't know where this stuff goes. Anyways, SK Hynix has announced that they've begun sampling their 96 layer, one terabit 3D QLC NAND. That is, that is insane. Quad level NAND. That we're gonna get so, uh, up to 16 terabytes is what it's gonna be able to do. That's crazy, 16 terabytes on an SSD. Man, it's fantastic. what a world. What a world, friends. And then finally, in the last bit of like mobile technology news, anyways, Qualcomm CEO, as well as other executives at Qualcomm, guess what? They be raking in the cash thanks to Apple's uh, deal with them because they closed the deal of the century. They pushed Intel out of the market. They settled with Apple instead of fighting in courts. It looks like they're gonna get billions of dollars in it. And well, the CEO as well as other executives were rewarded with Qualcomm shares in return for their great work and great efforts in making the company secure in its long-term future. So based on the value of Qualcomm shares and the amount of shares that they got, the CEO made just over $3.5 million from this deal, whereas the president earned 2.1, the CTO got 1.65, general counsel got 1.2, and then the interim CFO got $253,915. That's, I mean, your interim and your the CFO, so you should get less because you're dealing with the finances. It can't be a conflict of interest. You don't give yourself more. Anyways, I'm just rambling about nothing there. It looks like Qualcomm is making bank out of this whole thing, at least the execs are, so that's probably why they had some incentive to make sure that it got done when it did. So Apple can enjoy its 5G modems and the Qualcomm CEO can enjoy his cash.
And that's gonna end this half episode of Hot News. Remember that we do have two episodes that we're producing every single day. More of them like half episodes, probably around the eight to 10 minute mark. We try to have no more than nine articles that we're gonna cover in a given Hot News episode. So if you enjoy it, hit the like button, get subscribed. Don't forget to check out the displays at displate.com forward slash UFD Tech Official and enter UFD UFD as a coupon code to get 15% off in case you want some dope metal prints that adhere with magnets. We don't have a wall there, so we just use magic to free float them. So that's it. I'm Brett. Love you too. Hot news. Bye. Yeet.